Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to Saden Salkik, who is a prolific filmmaker, especially of experimental films, and his latest film is The Young Santa Claus, uh, which he wrote and directed and stars in. And also in The Young Santa Claus is John Flaus, who also joins us as well. So welcome, Saden. Welcome, John. Good. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Sadin, tell me about the inspiration behind this uh, rather uh, intriguing film, The Young Santa Claus. What what did you mean by it all? Thank you, Peter. Uh, well, I, I just want to, uh, I keep pronouncing my surname as Salkic, so uh, I'll just... Uh, Salkic, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh well, it was it was it was it was something that was lingering for a while. Uh, I had an idea about Santa Claus film, and uh, I sort of saw John, and I wanted to put his beard to good use at some point, you know, because uh, <laughs> it's just hanging there, and uh, you know, I thought might as well do something with it, uh, <laughs> and we uh, uh, ended up. Um, ended up working on it pretty uh, pretty intensely it was uh, an extremely hard film to make in a way because it exhausted me by the end of it it was finished because it's 85 minutes i i was um, bowled over as i kept telling people for about two weeks anybody who would listen i said i, I i'm tired I, I i can't move i'm something i think has exhausted me more than i thought it would and so on so it's it, it's been uh, and, and the santa claus suit became uh you know symbol of a life suit rather than anything else it had nothing to do with santa claus in many ways it just became this you know suit of life that a young man inherits um and finds on on the, on the beach upon his birth and uh um, you know, finds himself suddenly old, and it was also the inspiration was actually to show that fragility and and, and what vulnerability and, and of of the old age, you know, uh, at its core, you know, the, the as as the as some of the stuff on IMDb about the film says, you know, uh, he shall find a Santa Claus suit, and he, he, he and he shall experience all the um, uh, difficulties currently facing the elderly, you know, the the physical. Uh, 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 dissolution mental dissolution isolation you know loneliness he shall scream for help for help unheard you know and, and uh he shall wish wish to come back home because there's also that that ongoing thing was uh was you know the missing of one's home and where one's home is you know symbolized by the sea where he came from and so on so there was a lot of things involved with it yeah and there's this, that elliptical style because the film starts with the sea and emerging from the sea and then returning uh, to the sea and uh, and what happens in between, which uh, I found most intriguing. And uh, so tell me about that uh, elliptical style of story and shooting it in black and white. It's epic, isn't it? It just gives it that 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 really, what well, as the ending, John hasn't seen the film, but I've seen it with the, ah. uh, we had a viewing. Um, it was... Uh, it was just written in my head. It was sort of written, you know, I, I write these films I'm making, I sort of write them three times. First, I write the film, you know, the, the overall film. And then I, I write it the second time within the film and then the third time. So the film is is very written uh, among the whole thing because it's, 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 it's it, you know, you have the overall story, then you have the uh, story that, that, that it consists of, and then you have the minimalist cuts and movements and all that that make up each each of the scenes and, and, and stories so um so th th that's why it was I, I just felt this man being born uh and, and 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 getting on his life journey and returning home and it was it was just a, just such a such an epic uh it was a concept you know that had to be delivered and once it, it ended my friend i was almost in tears actually i to be honest after we watched it on a bigger screen i uh I was aroused, but I, I was almost crying, you know, because it was it's quite personal, you know, for me, understanding of one's home and one's belonging to a place, you know, forever of birth in some way, in some deep poetic, melancholic way is very clear to me. And I don't know if you guys have the similar conception. Maybe I'm a inherently melancholic, a European, a, a poet or whatever, whatever the reason for that melancholy is, but it's certainly deep and, and clear to me, you know, and, and, and must, you know. So yeah, that's that was it. Yeah, but then John, then John, anyway, you you guys keep talking. But there was a lot of a lot of that stuff. Yeah, a lot of things. 
Okay. Now, John, I know you haven't seen the completed film, as uh, as Sadin just uh, said, but tell me about what your reaction, uh, you've been in a number of his films now, uh, your reaction, yeah. John, to uh, th this story and being filmed in this one. Uh, that's difficult, right? Uh, um, because, uh, in a sense, it was a an act of... of, of, of I don't know the right word for this now, but I call it loyalty to a friend. That he had a need for me. That I, I'm possessed of something or a capacity that's uh, not exactly measurable or anything of that kind, but that could be helpful to what he had written. Could could give it an, an expression and a life and an identity, perhaps. Yes. Well, I reckon I probably managed to do that. And for me. At my age, you know, like a, I'm a fortnight away from turning 90, uh, <laughs> I, uh, it, it's sort of um, just, yes, I, I'm still useful. I can still be creative if the, if a, a, uh, something is put to me. Uh, and and that's, that, that, that was it. So it was partly for me to, to, to continue to, to, to be doing something worthwhile, possibly even valuable to other people. And uh, when the film got released, I was hoping that would happen, but even if it didn't, that to work on it for, for someone like Sadin was uh, just, was beautiful to do. Uh, and he's not, he, he wouldn't think so about him like that because he, he tosses orders around, commands, in fact. But uh, he's not a tough bluff for all of that. It's sort of like it's an act he puts on, you know. <laughs> I I know I which commands, which... Go on. Yeah, I was telling Peter about your email. Uh, we might as well, it's a good story, you might as well tell it uh, to continue your thought there. Uh, that, that you wrote to me about today's interview, you said, uh, uh, good day, Field Marshal. What, what do you what do you need me to do, Field Marshal? And then, uh, and I and I said, I began my answer. I said, uh, Field Marshal is is a bit below my rank, officer, as you know. <laughs> but it was what was amazing, and what's amazing about John, but, but perhaps particularly in this film, yeah. And that was also one of the reasons for having the Santa Claus suit to give it that characterization, that association to 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 the to. to you know, to the general perception in the world um, of that, and, and and be able to associate this person to that that you know fictional identity, or however it is. You know, it was sort of great to have that additional um, uh, you know sphere to it. But then, yeah. what's great about him is just the way we worked. You know, and and he's such a great, he's so great in this film. I mean, really, the guy from New York said that Leo like John Flowers. You know. And in this film, and he is, you know, um, um, and and for me, it's it's always finding the best way to work with whom I'm working with, and with John, in his case, it's it's what you can do with this, you know, frail young man at ninety, you know, at the gates of ninety, you know, <laughs> what can he do that uh, that yes can be useful to the film, but uh, that was already, you know, thought of, that was planned, that's that's why we were there to do this, what he can do, I was there to do that. And uh, then we, then we, you know, did it. We did a lot of filming in one day, and it was tiring for him. But basically, what it was, it was, you know, filming him all he can do, and then filming him going somewhere else to have a rest, and then filming that, incorporating that into the story, and then yeah. bringing all these things up. And um, you know, it's pretty great to to have done that with him. You know, it's a special document. I thought, for, for, you know, yeah. Uh, it was amazing that you've seen it, Peter. I was very, I was anxious when I sent it to you, and I sent it to you, sent it to him, John, the night before. And I was, you know, I, I stopped biting my nails a long time ago, but I was almost biting my nails. I thought, geez, what's he, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna say? Because it's I, such a huge film, really. It is, and I always look at everything I'm sent, uh, all screeners and so on. And uh, yes, I, I, I like the uh, the places you shot, including uh, under Westgate Bridge and uh, and uh, some other locations, uh, including uh, John's house and all that sort of thing. So, uh, I'm uh -huh. uh, it's it's interesting uh, the the locations you use and uh, having that camera there facing yourself uh, a lot of the time and so on. Uh, it's it's a lot of yeah, work. 
Yeah, a lot of work. That that was the additional part, performing, you know, performing live for the camera, which yeah. that was the, the 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 breakthrough that happened to me with a film I mentioned to you before called The Compassion of the Undertaker, which is uh, you know, which which received a great quote from Maggie Fook, who said uh, um, it's a masterwork and a very, very, very important work. So there was three varies, which was very good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get three varies, you know, it's not, it's it's nice. Um, uh, so yeah, and then this aspect of repetition of the cinematic language itself. So it's, you know, of the of the repetition. How do we tell the story? How, how do we evolve the narrative cinematic storytelling? You know, what do we do to it? We have to we have to evolve it somehow. We cannot have the same old the same old thing. And 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 so these aspects of of of, of repetition and, and 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 change of rhythm and intensity. You know, the guy's approaching the car under the bridge, and you're you're astounded. You know, you you, you know it's what's that? It's so tense. You know. Uh, and um, and I was thinking, uh, I had a, and maybe you'll be happy to hear about this, John, too, that uh, uh, the, the, the New York-based, uh, uh, well, I suppose cult uh, um, new filmmakers co-op from New York that was started by uh, some filmmakers in the 60s started distributing my films. So they, uh, they yeah. become, they, they, uh, yeah, my films, two of my films, Swan Lake and the Atomic Bomb and Silence's Crescendo are available there. With screenings in New York planned first via Zoom Q and A, and then possibly next year or sometime in 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 person, I have lost my train of thought completely. What I was thinking before this, um, uh, whatever I was saying, yes. How do we involve the narrative? You know, people who call themselves avant-garde filmmakers, they've only focused on 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 the image itself, and and sort of created, I think, that done damage to the avant-garde avant-gardeness of cinema by just. Doing these these sort of slideshows, you know that 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 they call avant-garde cinema without any narrative context or concept, has sort of scared the, the population away from uh, uh, avant-garde cinema. Now that that would average Joe, whoever that is, because that, that, that applies to everybody in some way. Um, when he when he hears avant-garde cinema, he says, no, "I'm not going to see that. That's horrible. That has a that that, that has no juice, energy, and and and, and 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 you know most of the power of cinema is diminished." there and sort of d dismantled and thrown away and then they call themselves avant-garde cinema and i think it's it's they've done a great uh, disfavor to the avant-garde in cinema and evolution uh, and continuing to keep the the interest to the because uh it's important uh, that, that you know so anyway we got a uh, avant-garde of cinema has to be evolved in many ways i think what they've done they've by creating these slideshows sort of the, the things they've done such damage to, to humanity in art because uh, there we have now in festivals, all city of festivals, uh, white white nights and all that, projecting big images on the buildings, you know, and, and that's art. And and people are, as moths and kangaroos sitting there and watching these these light shows, you know, without any human uh, context uh, or the grip or lyrical power, uh, poet, poetic power of cinema and art itself. So we're losing the humanity of, of art, which is a purely human thing, you know. And so th that was one of the aims, you know, and, and it is ongoing. How do we evolve the whole thing? We got to evolve it and 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 and, and present it to the public and audience as the better product in many, in all the possible ways, than this cheesy mainstream stuff they're showing. In context, in grip yeah. of on, on nervous system, in 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 intensity, in in everything, you know. So that's the aim, anyway. That's the aim. So it's a pretty decent aim. <laughs> Go Excellent. go ahead, you two talk. Stop me talking. I have this green scarf. I'm talking too much. Come on, you two talk. About something. <laughs> well, well, John. Uh, you, well, John, I want to ask you because you're you're well noted for your appearances in naturalistic sorts of films, and uh, and yeah. of course you've uh, critiqued so many films, so many different uh, avenues of filmmaking. How do you respond to uh, Sadin's avant-garde approach? To filmmaking and uh, and what that says about cinema and cinema art. That uh, that's interesting that you say that because the approach when I work with someone uh, of whom there are very few, uh, so, uh, like uh, Sidin, then I'm I'm there to 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 deliver to him whatever it is that he he needs if if, if indeed I have it, uh, and sometimes. What he wants from me is something that I've got to, well, examine myself a bit more carefully before I can understand sufficiently to do it. So working on the, this kind of non-mainstream uh, narrative drama means that I'm continuously exploring myself as well as the the created character, the fictional character. 
uh, and so uh, there, there, there are other directors in this country uh, who have from time to time called upon me to do something for them. I've done the best I could, but for each one of them, it's a different uh, journey of exploration into myself. Now, that, I hope that doesn't sound too selfish, but it means that I'm, I must enjoy what I'm doing <laughs> when working on films such as this. Whereas if I'm in mainstream film, then I may be handed down an expertly uh, fashioned uh, uh, sequence of, of uh, action and, and dialogue, but that all of it has, a, how am I going to put it, a kind of predetermined, uh, almost mechanical principle within it. And um, yeah. uh, that's not the case when I'm working on avant garde. Avant garde. No. Is it is an exploration of the self as well as the subject that the artist, the, the film director, uh, is exploring? Sure, we uh, must remember that. Yeah. Sorry, Go on. I think we must remember and not lose the. We must remember and not lose the ambition that uh, that, that, that the, the, you know the avant garde must become the elite. You know, it's it's, it's some. That's the whole notion of uh, trajectory of. Uh, ambition there's no uh what they call avant-garde from 20th century and all this stuff that i referred to before uh forever frozen in avant-garde never really reached and uh, changed the consciousness uh, in, a, in a populist frame that must be the aim yeah. we have we have to as i said so uh, uh intensely uh, holding a speech there uh um that that, that must be an aim that, that, that it's, this is like dead avant-garde avant-garde that doesn't exist such thing is impossible it doesn't exist you know, uh, it's like, oh, well, this is avant-garde, you know, and it's still dead avant-garde discourse, the closed circle, it's there existing. The, 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 the whole point in nature and philosophical, philosophical foundation of avant-garde is, is the change, constant change and successive change, you know, of the form that it is uh, attempting to do that to, you know. Uh, um, now, so anyway. now, come the, now, now comes the drawback, starting with that, is that sometimes what the exploration uh, arrives at uh, amongst many points of arrival is that what what this narrative now needs in relation to its subject is meditation. Uh, now uh, there are, there are some uh, avant garde films certainly which um, put an emphasis on meditation. Uh, if that is if if, if you to to, to get as much from it as possible, then you meditate upon it. But unfortunately, the majority of a film going audience, even even if they're ready to go and see something that's called avant garde, uh, even so, that. they're not used we, to. We it. can't. I know what you're saying, Joe, but we can't expect uh, from uh, anything from our audience. We we must go in there and expect nothing from them, and and yet expect to 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 change their consciousness. You know. We can, it's what? not, this is the whole problem. So, oh, I have some popcorn and I expect you to sit here down and for two and a half hours of this this blabbering, vomiting process, you know. The, the, and, and But we uh, the way I see it, I go expecting nothing and ex uh, from them um, and, and, and then everything and expecting the, the revolutions within them. Yeah, you know, there are some things that are undeniable. When you, and this point of watching, I watched the film. No, it's not that. I, that's offensive to me. You experience the film. You know, you don't just sit there and watch the paint change. You experience it with a great grip on your nervous system to the point of, you know, the shakeup that you do, that you come out as a changed person. You know, I had an experience like that in Adelaide many years ago after somebody saw Silence's Crescendo. And they came, a young fella gave me a hug. He said, my life will never be the same again, you know. And uh, and, and, and and that's sort of what you have to have. It's, it's a living organism, this cinema. This is why, you know, it's avant-garde. must be it's the most alive uh, spear, spearhead, you know. Uh, that, 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 that is, that cannot be rejected. It cannot be defeated. It cannot be ignored. And oh, and by, sheer, by the sheer it's its own power you know um and and so we cannot expect oh come and i'll educate you because because it's so wise and at the, at the same time you have to, you, you you know you have to expect somebody to sit there and try to be you, you can't you have to force them to be there to the point where they cannot 
do anything else in their life at that point. It's the only thing in their lives that they can and want to do. And 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 at the same time, you have to you know be giving them this revolution of substance of cinema where people are not pretending to be others, representation and all that stuff. So the, the aim is large. It's, it's the biggest front line, as I've said before, in the world at the moment, the cinema front line. The trenches are, you know... Uh, there, but they are they're moving forward very quickly. You know, the armies are advancing very quickly. <laughs> and and John and I have a private ongoing joke that he's a, he's a felt marshal in the army. He's given himself at first. I called him general. You know, in the army, in the soldiers' <laughs> army. And then he's he's asked to be field marshal <laughs> recently. <laughs> he's asked the, the the increase in rank, which he of course deserves, doesn't he? Yeah. Speak, John. Are you okay? Are you looking a bit tired? Are you all right there? Um, I, no, I'm just crooked this now with with all these old man's complaints. Not none of them. Fortunately, none of them are contagious to other people. But I've got a lot of things that have slowed me down, so I, I can't. Uh, I don't have the balance I used to have. It's difficult for me to walk. But if I stand in the same spot for five minutes, my feet go numb, and I'm likely to fall again. Then I've got the Alzheimer's, so I'm seriously forgetting things, including films I've been in, and I'm surprised. You never forget them. that you have Alzheimer's, which is a good thing, good sign. Once you start forgetting no, that you have I, Alzheimer's. Oh, so. if I forget I've yeah. got it, I'm in serious trouble. Then, then, you, then you really have got it, yeah. Um, and, th and the acne it, makes me... Yes. Uh, isn't yeah. he amazing in, in the film, Peter? Uh, he is. John. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, isn't he incredible? And, and, Amazing! Why don't what's 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 in that? Just let us talk about you, but don't don't have to try to be clever. Then just let us. This oh. is it's 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 pretty special, isn't it? Pretty special, and just his face, the way he works. And I told him you're a great actor, you know, uh, in this, and because it takes takes a lot for such minimalist process, you know, and 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 uh, you know, I've I've loved working with him. I've loved working. He's been very perceptive. Uh, uh, you know, and brilliant at it. And at that point, when he's in the forest and he's lost, you know, with his cane, and and you know, a lot of time I've thought of you know Bergman's wild strawberries at, at some points of that. It's very sublime as he's holding on that tree, you know, and the camera zooms out and he's lost and he's, you know, screaming and he's isolated. It's nothing is happening, and and every point is is so you know so great and basically and, and so gripping and it's basically a man you know getting up from a bed going to another having a nap going to you know be, just living in this house and it's just so gripping everything is so gripping and one of my favorite bits johnny haven't seen yet but when he goes and and he puts the kettle on and he's waiting for the kettle to boil and it's just not happening it's the longest boiling boiling kettle in history and it's just there waiting for it to boil <laughs> and then he falls asleep as he waits for the kettle to boil you know so <clears throat> It's it's interesting, you know, the whole thing of the white car and the black car, and 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 then it gave me this opportunity of, you know, of showing the real struggle of, of the old people. You have the, you have it at the core, right there, you know, vulnerability of in every possible way. And John speaking live on the uh, performing also live on the on the, on, the, on the phone, you know, it's also amazing addition. Yeah. John, I don't I, know what's in this water, but I can't stop talking. Yeah. Okay, John, I wanted to ask you, you you your comments about acting being interior, uh, personal, uh, and also taking direction uh, from uh, from directors and so on. Uh, and, and I suppose that introduces the whole notion of things like method acting and other approaches to being an actor. What, what do you, uh, what role or what way do you inhabit the way an actor should operate? Uh, not in my films. Anyway, go ahead, John. No, um, it's um, in almost everything I, I've done over the oh, over the years. Uh, the, the the basic uh, do I call them? No, they're not exercises; they're disciplines. The basic disciplines are uh, remembering all of the lines of dialogue, uh, and uh, equally with that, uh, remembering. What actions are required, either from my my uh, character that I'm playing, or from any of the other actors, whatever characters they are playing, and that all of that needs to be in the mind already and uh, at at uh, instant call uh, to perform. 
as already written and decided by some other person, by some whoever the author is. Now, that, that's that's part of the. If the text uh, is a classic, uh, let's let's say it's an Elizabethan verse drama or something, then. But you're uh, free from that. We are free. You're free from that in 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 this film, in 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 this cinema, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. in all of my films. So uh, you, you are freed from this uh, confectionery inhibition uh, completely to begin with. You know, you're closer to yourself. That, that's you, what you, I need to say. Yes, but 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 in being free to it, I, what I don't have is a defined attitude or practice. It's just like I I let it happen. Uh, depending on, uh, of course, the personality of the creator, but also well, whatever I see as the emotional potential in whatever the creator is creating, and that I'm part of his or, or her creation, um, but that in order for that creation of, of theirs to, to to finally reach the world and a public, then I must be creative. Within me, I have to find something within me that belongs to other people's creation. Now, there have been a few occasions when I didn't think that was the case, that I'd been so miscast that uh, all I could do was, uh, what, what do we call it, sort of uh, conventional acting, uh, remembering your lines, uh, being in the right place in relation to the camera, uh, and, and then just wait, wait, waiting for the, uh, the lighting to be arranged correctly. Uh, and then... Um, uh, repeat what I'd memorized, what I'd been memorizing off and on uh, for the week before. Actually, now, that's terrible. You see, that's horrible. That's, a, it's a, that's, yeah. that, that's why you get a, a salary. That's why actors expect to get a salary, is because doing all that kind of thing is, in a sense, suppressing yourself uh, and allowing some alien to take over for, uh, momentarily. <laughs> But, that's, but that, that's, you see, that's why you don't remember those times because that, that's what, yeah. They, but, but when yeah. I when I work for people like you, God blimey, yeah, that, that's 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 lively. You know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm uh, well, I don't know what the right word for that is, but but I'm so busy and active, I feel like I'm still growing. Yeah, um, isn't, that's beautiful. That's so. That's amazing. Thank you. That's yeah. <laughs> Thank you, because I do oh, I get to... try hard for you to say something that really means things to you. You know, uh, yeah. that that is very close to you know who you are and how do you feel. You know, it's uh, that's what that's what is very important. You know. Okay, my my Zoom interview is going to expire in a, in a four minutes or so. So, uh, oh. Sadin, I wanted to ask you, um, how will people be able to see the young Santa Claus? Yes. Well, the young Santa Claus is is uh, is one of those films that has to be uh, lobbied for, and I've started that. I've I've um, sent it to MIF. There's a couple of my films possibly, you know, been sent to MIF, and I've I've I've, I've lobbied for it in um, uh, in Canada for Toronto International Film Festival. Um, there's obviously the, these screenings of my work in New York. I, I don't know what will be screened, uh, but uh, uh, the film was made in. in uh, end of february you know it was it was completed in the second part of february only and uh, i've 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 finished another feature film after that called uh, trauma owns the night which is 60 minute uh, yeah. uh film um so as as i told you in one of the other interviews my focus is 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 so much on making new work that i cannot answer you that question you know mm. we don't have a dis well i have now i have my distributors you know in new york but not for Santa Claus, not for the Santa Claus film. And we need to, I feel we need to present this film somewhere nice, you know, somewhere worthy of it. It's it's so great, you know. Uh, I feel it's, it's, it's so emotional and so connected to so many things in life, you know, from youth and old age and, and everything. And, and why does the old man, why does the young Santa Claus choose to leave home? Is he scared of this old uh, age that he's witnessed? Is he... Yeah. Is he beaten by it? You know all that stuff. Some some unknown things. You know, I don't know. Okay, we might screen it in Castle Yeah, yeah. All oh, right, because uh, uh, 
because when people see this interview and hear it on my shows, um, uh, I often get calls asking me, now, how can I see Sadin's film? And, uh, and of <laughs> course, uh, it's hard for me to answer that. <laughs> well, they can contact, they contact, they can contact me directly. They can, there's my, my website. You can tell them that. They write me an email on the website, request the screen. I'll send it to them. Okay. I'll send it to them. You know, Just remind me of the website. Sidensalkitch.com. Yeah. Oh, it's, right. it's as simple as that. And they can do that, you know. But they've got to um, spell Sidon Salkitch correctly. It's true. <laughs> well, they, they will, John. They will. Uh, you know, there's some famous people in this interview. As you, did you say, star before? No, no we didn't start <laughs> recording that yet. Uh, you look like you've been on a big after party after your star night uh, on Tuesday night. You, you're still recovering from the after party, are you? Oh, oh, that was really something to see that film again after all these years. Yeah. You know, that to getting John Rowan started and then to see that film. Uh, and just just look at myself there. That uh, Though I'd appeared in two other films, I'd behaved as myself because that's who I was in each of them. But now when John and, and Elry Ryan uh, John Ruane, that is an Ellery mm. Ryan. Mm. They came to, they, they were students graduating from Swinburne, and uh, they, they were to make a final in their final year. Uh, mm. This this, and they showed it to me for my opinion of, of of the script. And one of the things I said to him was, "Hey, look, that that bloke, that Tendall bloke, he's so much like my old man. You know, that, that's something I could do." And they, how did they you feel, John? Home. Oh, well, How did you thing. feel to see yourself younger at, that, at this age of your life? You're looking oh, at yourself, look, were you before Tuesday or something? Night, look, looking at what I looked yeah. like well, from virtually 50 years ago, that that was a, um, oh, uh, uh, it was like it was a discovery in a way. Right? And uh, so many things in that film, uh, uh, matters of detail. But look, I will now grab this opportunity to say to you blokes, there's a scene in that film uh with myself and Alison Bird, uh, and we're lying together in bed at night, and cam the camera's framed so that uh, she is in uh, virtually uh, not quite close up, but very close to it, and I'm simply back there in the dark somewhere, and uh, I I do the talking, and Alison does the the responding, almost all of it wordless, not quite all, but almost all, and. What she was able to do in that time, I, I didn't measure the number of minutes of that passage, but I reckon it's three, four minutes long at least. It could be longer. Okay. And yes, John, we know. I know that scene. Yeah. I have yeah. to. I no, have no, to that. stop. Unfortunately, my Zoom is just telling me it's over. So, Sadan oh, Salkic and uh, John Flaus, thank you so much for talking to me about the young Santa Claus and some references to the <laughs> film Queensland. And uh, I wish you all well and uh, look forward to your next films. Oh, thank, thank you, Peter. And I, I, I look forward to you doing more of these shows. <laughs> Good to see you, Johnny. All the best. See you. Thank Thanks you, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you later. See you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.